Thank you. So last time was kind of a little bit of a rough ride. So let me um, uh, review uh, uh, what we said. I, I tried to uh, some of the relevant stuff up on the blackboard um, so that I could actually face the audience while summarizing it. Um, so what I said was that we can manufacture uh, four-dimensional n equals two superconformal field theory um, labeled by a set of data, um, which I repeat over here, uh, choice of ADE Lie algebra, um, which is essentially, as, as Lottie uh, uh, mentioned in her talk, uh, choice of two zero superconformal field theory in six dimensions. Uh, and then a Riemann surface C, in which to compactify that theory down to four dimensions uh, with uh, real co-dimension two defect operators located at points on the Riemann surface. And as I said, I want C to be stable. So for low genus, there's some minimum number of points. Um, a choice of uh, principal uh, uh, gamma bundle, where gamma is the other automorphism group of J, um, on the complement of these points. Uh, if P is trivial, this is what we call the untwisted theory. And most of what I uh, uh, said last time was about the untwisted case. Uh, I'll try to do a little bit about the twisted case today. Um, and at each of the, the, at each of the marked points, there's a decoration, which is a choice of nilpotent orbit, either in the Lie algebra J, if P restricted to the circle is, is trivial, or in the Langlands dual of the invariant subalgebra, if P restricted to the circle is non-trivial. So that's the data that gives you a theory. Um, and if you want to see the remarkable zoology of theories that you get uh, when J is E7 or E8, there were so many of them we had to put them online because you couldn't put them in a paper. And you can entertain yourself by going to either of those URLs uh, and um, playing around. We list all of the three punctured and four punctured spheres in that uh, in those theories, um, and it's uh, hours of entertainment. Um, we um, uh, so uh, J naught is the invariant subalgebra, right? The one preserved by the the holonomy of P restricted to the circle. It's Langland's dual is uh, G, okay? And you choose a nilpotent orbit in G. Correct. That's right. Correct. So in the untwisted case, of course, J naught is just J. And since J was simply laced, uh, it's Langland's dual is itself. In the other cases, it's, it's something different. Okay. Um, I also, uh, in order to extract the, the physics, we had this idea that um, uh, these theories could be put together by taking the theories associated to three punctured spheres and gauging some common sub uh, algebra, some common subgroup of the uh, global symmetry group of those theories and building things up in this tinker toy fashion. And I wanted to. Um, and I explained something about the gauge couplings and how that's related to the um, moduli space of these uh, uh, Riemann surfaces. So in the simplest possible context, which was the untwisted theory on the four punctured sphere, you have the uh, one dimensional moduli space of the four punctured sphere parametrized by the cross ratio of the four points. And the relation between the cross ratio and the gauge coupling is summarized over here. The gauge coupling, I have, um, this is the, the gauge coupling, this is the theta angle of the theory. We form this complex combination tau, 
Q is e to the i pi tau, and the cross ratio turns out to be some ratio of fourth powers of theta functions. Okay? And so particular values, since this might not be uh, immediate, if you want to study weak coupling, which is g, g goes to zero, that's tau goes to i infinity, or f of tau goes to zero. Strong coupling is um, uh, uh, tau approaching the real axis, but there are different ways to approach the real axis. Uh, you can approach uh, tau equals zero, that's f of tau goes to one, or you could approach uh, uh, tau goes to one, which is uh, um, f of tau goes to one. Um, and for later purposes, I'll just point out that the um, uh, uh, sitting uh, smack dab in the middle of the upper half plane uh, corresponds to uh, taking f of tau to minus one. Okay, something which will uh, uh, not be, be a useful remark until about an hour from now. Okay, um, I I would try to draw a picture of the fundamental domain for gamma of two and show how it maps to the punctured plane. I'm not sure um, whether uh, anyone wants to see my crappy draftsmanship, but I, I, I'm sure most people could draw it better than I can. So we also did an example uh, in the untwisted a n minus one theory. Uh, we took the four punctured sphere uh, nilpotent orbits uh, in a n minus one are labeled by partitions of n, and so we took uh, these partitions um, as, the four, as our uh, decorations on the four marked points. Uh, again, we took the gauge coupling to be just the cross ratio, and we computed the um, spectral curve for the associated Higgs bundle uh, story on this uh, space. Um, if I use my Mobius invariance to fix four of the points, uh, sorry, three of the points, and the fourth one is the cross ratio, then the um, cyborg witten or, or spectral curve for this theory is written over here. And I, in rather oracular fashion, told you the physics as we approach um, these various limits. So um, when we um, uh, go to uh, f uh, equals zero or infinity, what we get are two copies of this three punctured sphere, which I claimed was just n squared free hypermultiplets, where I gauge an SUN uh, diagonal subgroup of the flavor symmetry of that. And so that's the Lagrangian field theory, which is SUN with 2N the mental hypermultiplets. That's true at f of tau equals uh, zero, uh, approaching zero and infinity, but an alternative realization appears when you look at f of tau um, approaching one. Instead, what you get is an SU2 gauge theory uh, coupled to this mysterious um, isolated n equals two super conformal field theory uh, who's, can I, have I arranged things so that nobody can see this? Yeah, I probably have. Um, the global symmetry contains an SU2 factor that you can gauge. And um, in addition to that, uh, there's one of these uh, irregular fixtures which contains an additional hypermultiplet in the fundamental of SU2. And that combination is um, conformally invariant. And that's the interpretation of this theory as you go to this strong coupling limit, it has this alternative realization as a gauge theory uh, where instead of an SUN um, becoming weakly coupled, it's an SU2 that becomes weakly coupled. Um, so those are the, uh, what I claim is the physics. Um, uh, I told you nothing about how one's supposed to deduce that or if we changed the theory that we started with, how you would compute the physics for that new theory. So my aim today is to try to tell you a little bit 
of how you compute some of this stuff. So, so what's the most basic property of a um, conformal field theory in at least in even dimensions? And floor is certainly even. There's a conformal anomaly. Um, which is measured by a certain uh, d over 2 plus 1 point function of the stress tensor, or um, by computing the expectation value, it, this is in flat space, or computing the expectation value of the trace of the stress tensor on some curved uh, 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 Riemannian D-manifold. Um, and what you get when you do that in four dimensions, this is what, let me just write the four-dimensional expression, there are two possible terms, each of which are quadratic in the curvature. So let me write them. Uh, where vial squared, well, it's the square of the vial tensor, which can be written in terms of the Riemann tensor squared minus twice the Ricci tensor squared plus a third the Ricci scalar squared, and the this Euler term, or uh, the gauss bonnet density, is Riemann squared minus four times uh, Ricci tensor squared plus R squared. Um, and, and these coefficients A and C are invariants of the conformal field theory. They are, if you will, its most basic properties. Um, in two dimensions, there's only one of these guys uh, called C. <laughs> and you, if you're familiar with two-dimensional conformal field theory, you know about the, uh, that central charge. In four dimensions, there are two. Uh, called A and C, and the, these are the uh, um, uh, definitions of them. A and C are, in our theories, are rational numbers, uh, and it's convenient to form certain linear combinations of them. Um, uh, to define a number I'll call n sub h, which is 4 times 5c minus 4a, and n sub v, which is 4 times 2a minus c, um, which for these uh, theories described over there are non-negative integers. And they have a very concrete interpretation if the theory is a Lagrangian theory, like this theory in one of its S-duality frames, actually two of its S-duality frames, in a Lagrangian field theory, n sub h is the number of hypermultiplets, and n sub v is the number of vector multiplets. Right? So over here, uh, I would have uh, 2n squared, n sub h is 2n squared, and n sub v is n squared minus 1. n sub h and n sub v is 2n squared comma n squared minus 1 for this theory over here. No, it, they are integers for the theories described on that first panel over there. And what I'm going to do is give you formulas for them, which are manifestly integers. <laughs> okay? Um, they are not integers in some of the theories that Lottie considers. Um, 
So I have a, a rather um, a, a restricted uh, definition of what I'm going to call class S, namely the one over there. And with that definition, uh, these numbers are integers. With hers, they're, they're rational numbers. Okay, still. Okay. Okay, so those are the, uh, are the stories. And the answer, um, the uh, uh, formula for these guys is given by uh, a sort of rock. like formula um, where um, you have a contribution from each puncture and then a contribution from the surface proportional to g minus genus minus one and I think I was using um, H check for dual coxeter number Uh, and n sub v is, again, a similar formula. Times dim j. Uh, where the, so where the contributions from the... Um, uh, pictures um, have the following expression. So given some orbit, uh, we take 8 times 1 twelfth of the dual coxeter number of j times the dimension of j minus a half rho sub g dot h. I'll explain all, all of the symbols in a second, one half the dimension of uh, g one half uh, n sub v of O is eight times a twelfth dual Coxler number times the dimension minus a half. So this is actually all the same dot h, and then plus a half. Uh, rank of j minus the dimension of g naught. So um, rho sub j is the vial vector for j. Uh, h is the image of the Cartan generator of SL2. Remember, uh, nilpotent orbits are in correspondence to embeddings of SL2 up to conjugacy. H is the image of the Cartan generator. Uh, G0 uh, is the zero eigenspace of the Cartan generator of SL2, and G1 half is the uh, Eigenspace with eigenvalue one half. So I'm using the physicist's convention for how to normalize the Cartan generator. Right. Sorry? Yeah, uh, right. So my conventions from last time are uh, Lie algebras are complex Lie algebras, Lie groups are co the corresponding compact Lie group, and m dimension uh, is you know either real or complex dimension appropriate. So I could have written as as dim C of curly J, right? Th those are the same. The, the answer was yes. I shouldn't have belabored the point. No, rho g, remember, I'm supposed to pick a nilpotent orbit in g. 
Latin J is the compact Lie, Lie group corresponding to the complex Lie algebra curly J. I had it right the first time. I just used too many words. Of the Cartan of SL, the Cartan generator of SL two. Right. So, a nilpotent orbit is, is corresponds to a particular embedding of SL two up to conjugacy. Right. Well, I mean, yes. Here I've given you the how the fundamental representation decomposes, right? Uh, what I have to do now is decompose the adjoint representation, right? And read off the the number. So G one half is basically telling you the number of uh, of copies of even dimensional representations of SL2 that appear in the composition of the adjoint. And G0 is the number of odd dimensional uh, representations of SL2 appearing in the composition of the adjoint. So in this event, the of the That's right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yes. That's right. Well, so your your the, the answer to that is the vast majority of theories have no S duality frame in which they are Lagrangian. In fact, in the E8 case over there, uh, there is no theory with any genus, any number of punctures, which has any S duality frame in which it is a Lagrangian field theory. Okay? There are gazillions of, of theories, none of which are Lagrangian field theories. But in a theory which has an S duality frame where it is a Lagrangian field theory, these numbers are the number of uh, uh, hypers and vectors. Okay? How do I know that? Um, uh, uh, well, I know what I mean by a Lagrangian field theory. When I turn all of the gauge couplings off, I get a bunch of free hypers and a bunch of free vectors. You see, I have these, uh, 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 these theories come in families, right, where I can tune the gauge couplings to zero, right? And then I just look at what I get. Okay, and, um, it, uh, there is no limit in which the the theory becomes a bunch of free hypers and a bunch of free vectors. This is just life. I mean, life. We no, nobody told us that that was all there was going to be to quantum field theory, and indeed, it's. Not. So uh, let, let me give you a reference um, uh, where we did this. Uh, 1203 uh, is our uh, paper uh, written with, uh, in collaboration with Yuji Tachikawa, and you can find all the derivation of all of these formulas there. Okay, so uh, um, derivation might be too strong a word. Uh, what we did was we took all of the known cases and re realized that they could be written invariantly in this way, and then check that that agreed with what you get in cases where we didn't previously know the answer. Okay, so it has to be linear combinations of, you know, various things you could write in terms of the data over there, and you can fix the linear combinations by examining own cases and then check that they agree with, you know, uh, other cases. And they do. So th this is the, uh, um, the... 
Well, calculating CNA, I mean, CNA or calculating N sub H and N sub V, those are the same thing. I mean, they're just linear combinations, right? I'm, the only, if I told you these, if I told you these are the formulas for CNA, you probably wouldn't um, uh, uh, object so hard. Um, you'd say, oh, okay, it's just another oracular statement of one of many that Distler has made over the course of the past hour and a half. Um, hour and oh, longer than that, um, and, and you know you wouldn't be at all. The, the fact that in a Lagrangian, in a S duality frame where the theory is Lagrangian, these numbers agree with something more elementary, that maybe is the cause of your surprise. Okay. Yes. Uh, so there's no limit uh, where you can turn off some gauge couplings and have it as a theory of free hypers and vectors, right? I think what Sergey is thinking of, maybe some of these theories can be realized as the endpoints of renormalization group trajectories from theories that are, you know, um, uh, um, uh, in, in the ultraviolet written as um, asymptotically free theories. Um, I know that's not true in five and six dimensions, if we were talking about the five and six dimensional theories. Uh, I can't prove that that's not true here, but it is a challenge for you to find the UV theory that flows to one of these, right? What I have told you is these guys, you know, which have marginal couplings, you can do whatever you want with the marginal coupling and you'll never reach a free theory. Okay. Shall we press on, or are there other? Oh, okay. So, what is the origin of this? Uh, uh, that paper over there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I say it's Riemann rock like in the sense that it has a contribution from each puncture and then a contribution from the bulk of the surface proportional to g minus 1, right? Which should remind you of Riemann rock like formulas for other things. Right. Yeah, any theory of the class written over there has. The okay. Yes. Uh, but, uh, I mean, we're never going to get anywhere if, 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 um, okay. So let me um, let me try to say some more things. This is what happens when you talk slow. When you talk fast, it all just goes smoothly. When you talk slow, people actually understand what you're saying and want to ask questions. Um, that's the problem. So um, let me just say a couple more. Things so are the Higgs and Coulomb branch dimensions. Um, so we haven't talked about the Higgs branch at all. Well, actually, that's not true. Sergey spent um, uh, two lectures uh, talking about things which can be interpreted as the Higgs branches of certain theories. Um, uh, so the Higgs branch is some hyperkähler space, um, and its quaternionic dimension uh, is the rank of what I'll call G prime plus sum on I over the, all of the punctures, N sub H of OI minus n sub v of oi. Uh, so these I've defined. G prime is just the subalgebra of uh, j preserved by all the twists. 
So if P is trivial, it's just A. Otherwise, it's something smaller. Um, and that gives you the dimension of the Higgs branch, the dimension of the Coulomb branch. So remember, for us, the Coulomb branch is the base of the uh, is the Hitchin base for this there. Um, sorry, where? No, it's just that. Um, uh, Dan Cool is um, uh, so this is also the quaternionic dimension of the Coulomb branch of the of the uh, 3D theory, which is of course the, not the Hitchin base, but the whole Hitchin moduli space. Uh, and this has a formula which looks like sum on i one half the complex dimension of the dual of the orbit O sub i, the thing that, um, and then plus uh, the dimension of um, j minus, at least if the thing is in the twisted theory. And so that, uh, where are my parentheses? That's a square bracket. And then plus a contribution from the surface, which is the dimension of G prime, um, which uh, I defined the script G prime. So capital G prime is the corresponding compact lead group. Um, so I was there, there are formulas for the, the you know, for, for these things, um, and the global symmetries, which I've um, alluded to many times, F, the global symmetry of the full theory, uh, contains uh, as a subgroup the global symmetries associated to each of the punctures, where uh, F sub i is the centralizer of rho i, which mapped SL2 into G, into G, uh, and in general, F is bigger than that. But I, one of the things I said was that I could um, uh, assign a level k to each uh, simple factor in each f sub i. So these are, should I say, uh, these are the global symmetries and their levels. Um, and um, For each f i simple factor, f i a in f i. Um, so f i is some reductive Lie algebra. Uh, f i a is some simple factor in in f i. Uh, right. Um, Yeah, write F I A as being the direct sum of V N. Oh, sorry, no, I'm writing it wrong. Uh, um, G as being the direct sum of V N tensor R N A, where uh, V N is the n-dimensional uh, irreducible representation of SL2, and RNA is the corresponding 
uh, in general reducible uh, representation of FIA. So you can decompose the adjoint of, of G into uh, representations of SL2 cross FIA. Um, and then what you do is you take um, LNA is the index, the Dinkin index of representation RNA, and the level of FIA uh, is Ka, which is sum of the indices of the of the Rs. Um, so I can do an example, but I see that my best laid plans um, uh, are, are uh, have run aground. I should probably press on. I, I, well, maybe I'll do an example during the break or something if anyone really is interested. It, it, this is trivial to compute. Um, if you can do that decomposition. And that gives you the level, which recall is the contribution to the beta function for if I try to gauge f, or that simple subgroup of f. This is, is the contribution to the beta function for that gauge group uh, 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 from this superconformal field theory. And I'll remind you that um, uh, if the sum of the contributions from either end of the cylinder adds up to four times the dual coxular number, that means that the beta function for that factor in the gauge group vanishes and you have a conformal theory. Right. Now, unfortunately, uh, as I said, the full global symmetry is uh, some enhancement of the manifest one, which just comes from the uh, global symmetries associated to each of the punctures. And in general, um, so far I've told you a pitifully small amount of information about some complicated quantum uh, uh, field theory. And so what I'd like to do is tell you, first of all, how you compute this enhancement when it happens, and also gain a lot more information about the quantum field theory. And the tool for doing that is called the superconformal index. So I managed to get through, um, uh, uh, wow, uh, a lecture and a half, a lecture and two, two thirds or something like that, um, without even telling you what superconformal symmetry is. Um, those of you who knew were not bothered by this. Those of you who didn't have probably already tuned out. But let me try to uh, rectify that now. Um, the conformal algebra. is some extension of Poincaré, which in d dimensions um, is uh, that um, uh, uh, the algebra. And the superconformal algebra Uh, is a Lie superalgebra where the even generators uh, 
just form SOD comma two cross well, direct sum, I guess, if I'm writing things uh, this way, uh, the conformal algebra, and then some compact Lie algebra, uh, uh, which depends on dimension and stuff. So this is uh, called the R symmetry. Um, and the odd generators of the Lie superalgebra are called Q and S. Uh, they transform as the spinner representation of S O D D comma two and some uh, unitary uh, representation of uh, R. And this is supposed to be a Lie superalgebra. Now, the conformal algebra, because I wrote it the way I wrote it, exists in any dimension. But Lie superalgebras only, uh, uh, of this description, superconformal algebras only exist in certain dimensions, uh, certain low dimensions. Uh, and they were classified by NOM. in 1978, and let me just list them. Uh, the highest dimension in which you can have a superconformal algebra is d equals 6, and um, uh, we've mostly been talking about uh, uh, this guy, uh, the two, n equals 2, 0. Next week we'll probably hear something about n equals 1, 0. Um, and then in D equals 5, you can have N equals 1. In uh, D equals 4, you can have uh, N less than or equal to 4. And we're particularly interested in, um, in uh, N equals 2, where the least superalgebra uh, uh, is called SU2, 2 slash 2. The name is unilluminating, so I, I, I uh, hesitate to put it down. But and in D equals three, uh, you can have n less than or equal to eight. Um, and so, remarkably, there's a sort of, uh, the finite list of of uh, of superconformal theory, uh, not super superconformal algebras. Uh, and so, there are only if you're looking for supersymmetric fixed points of the renormalization group. You're only going to find them in certain dimensions. Uh, nobody up until, uh, 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 well, it's now almost 20 years, up until a couple of decades ago, uh, took seriously the possibility of d equals 5 and 6. Now we know that there are theories uh, in d equals 5 and 6. Um, and everything in Nam's classification actually has some realization uh, in, in physics. Right, so you can only have free theories. You can't have interacting theories. With, uh, uh, um, no, you, well, uh, I'm specifically talking about quantum field theories, not gravitational theories, right? Um, and so these, these are the ones where you can have interacting uh, 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 quantum field theories, um, uh, uh, and, and these are the dimensions and the values of n for which uh, they occur. Um, anyways, the point is, if you want to uh, study the spectrum of operators in such a theory, what you can do is um, compute some kind of character-valued index. Um, so counting, um, so we can. Uh, go to a basis of a so Cartan subalgebra of, of this um, uh, algebra over here. So I'm going to specifically focus on n equals 2, d equals 4, where the eigenvalues of our Cartan are given by a scaling dimension uh, 
And SO4 uh, uh, representation. Um, so I should have said here, the R symmetry uh, is um, SU2 cross U1. Um, so this is the uh, SU2 uh, R highest weight. And um, little r is the u1 uh, weight. And so we can um, uh, grade our uh, operator content uh, or so local operators or equivalently the uh, Hilbert space of states when you quantize on the three sphere, um, uh, we can take minus one to the fermion number uh, times a product of mu i to the ci's times e, choose a particular uh, uh, pair of um, superchargers e to the minus beta, uh, and, and construct some sort of Witten index-like uh, uh, trace, uh, and you discover that by the miracle of supersymmetry, this is independent of beta, and just counts sign, um, uh, uh, states on the uh, Hilbert space on S3, or local operators, um, uh, uh, graded by the eigenvalues of the Cartan, of the um, bosonic part of the algebra. And there are, in general, this isn't a particularly computable thing, but there are two limits which um, uh, are eminently computable. Um, and um, there's a long series of paper by uh, Leonardo Restelli uh, who um, explain how to compute these things. One limit uh, uh, one limit is called the sure limit, uh, where we take uh, the trace of p to the delta minus r times minus 1 to the fermion number. And the other one is called the hall little uh, uh index, where we take the trace over a certain subspace of the Hilbert space on the three sphere of tau to the two delta minus r times minus one to the f where the hall littlewood subspace is the space of states which satisfy delta minus 2r minus r equals j2 e equals, excuse me, j1 equals 0. Um, and you can further find this if you have some flavor symmetries instead of this index you can compute some a character valued index where you're looking at uh, uh, characters of the flavor symmetry uh, algebra and so the uh, formula for that refined index is given by an incredibly beautiful expression due to uh, uh, those guys in fact um, let me give the uh, references um, for this formula, one of them is 11, 10, 3, 7, 4, 0. This is uh, Gaddy et al. Um, Abhijit, I believe, will be here next week. Good. So any questions, you just bug him. Don't ask me. OK. Uh, and the other paper is uh, 12, 12, 1, 2, 7. One by Lemos and all, um, 
And so the sure index So I introduce, I, I'm writing some character value in index, so I introduce some fugacities for the Cartan of the flavor symmetry. It's given as a sum over uh, uh, representations of the flavor symmetry of the, uh, 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 of the manifest layer. Let me write out the formula and then I'll, I'll just, um, it's, sorry, it's given, let me just write out the damn formula. So it's a sum over representations of uh, J, product I equals one to N, some polynomial whose detailed form you can find either in those papers or in papers of ours, times the character of that representation uh, decomposed under this, and you divide by the same expression uh, for the regular embedding uh, of SL2 raised to the 2G minus 2 plus nth power. Uh, and the Hall-Littlewood index has a very similar looking formula. It's given by a sum over highest weight representations um, of J. Some similar K factors. And then instead of the characters here, you get Hall-Littlewood polynomials. Um, and similarly, there's a denominator of the same form where you uh, use the regular embedding. Uh, where P lambda, as I said, are uh, Hall-Littlewood polynomials. And these are a bear to compute uh, because uh, we, you need to sum over the vial group. And uh, you should never say those words and E8 in the same sentence. Um, so that's a, a terrible thing. Um, and, and I mean, I would love... Uh, a more efficient way of computing those things. Is it, yes? What's K? So K are some, some polynomials. That, I don't want to write the detailed expression. You can find them in these papers. Um, but they're, those are easily written down. The hard thing in these formulas to write down are these uh, Hall-Littlewood polynomials. And you also have this sum over representations. Uh, at any given order in the, in the this is a series, at any given order in the series, you only have a finite number of representations contributing. But if you want to go to higher and higher order, more and more representations, lambda, contribute. And so you have to, you know, computations get longer and longer. Okay? Uh, we're basically going to be interested in these things for uh, just the first couple of terms in the um, series. But I need to tell you what these things are counting. This is supposed to be an index, so it's supposed to be counting contributions from um, uh, 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 things. And these count short representations of the superconformal algebra. Um, and uh, uh, Dolan and Osborne classified all of these short representations of the uh, superconformal algebra. For, oh, they did various cases, but in particular were interested in the 4, 4D n equals 2 superconformal algebra. And there's a long list 
of short representations that you can find, the ones we're interested in are um, called E sub R of zero in J2. These have delta equals R and J1 equals capital R equals zero and E bar uh, R of J1 and zero, which have delta equals minus R and J2 equals R equals zero. These guys, um, parameterize the Coulomb branch of the theory. Uh, turning these guys on uh, is doing what Lottie wants to do, which is move out on the Coulomb branch. Uh, another set of interesting representations are called B hat sub R, uh, which um, have delta equals 2 R, uh, J1 equals J2 equals R equals zero. And these parameterize the Higgs branch. So turning on these operators moves you out onto the Higgs branch of the theory. There are also some other uh, interesting representations which I probably won't get uh, to say very much about. There's C hat R J1 J2 where, as it turns out, c hat zero, 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 c hat zero, zero, zero is the um, multiplet that the stress tensor lives in. And so you might be interested in computing the number of those multiplets. That tells you how many stress tensors your theory has, um, which roughly tells you how many decoupled sectors there are in the theory. Um, and then there are some other multiplets um, which crop up uh, d r zero j two and uh, d bar r j one zero, um, which well, I'm running out of time. I see, so I'm not going to uh, uh, tell you more about those. The um, Uh, the point is that if you take either of these indices um, and where can I write something over here? Take either of these indices and expand them to low orders in that series, um, you get rather important information uh, up to order tau squared. Uh, I, H, L, and I, sure, agree, which is to say I don't really need to know the expressions or the hall littlewood polynomials. I could just use the characters instead. Um, and moreover, the order tau contribution uh, is just the number of d hat one half multiplets which is the same as the number of free hypers in the theory. The order tau squared uh, well there's a contribution from the free hypers but after you remove that it gives you the uh, number of b hat one multiplets. These are the moment maps on the Higgs branch for the flavor symmetry. That's to say the conserved currents that I was talking about live in one of these B hat one multiplets. Okay, so I wanna count the number of conserved currents and figure out what the flavor symmetry is. I just need to count the number of B hat one multiplets and computing the index tells you that. In fact, if you compute the refined index, you get the characters under the manifest uh, uh, global symmetry. So that's um, brilliant. It's exactly what you need. Um, and so uh, if you were to apply these formulas to this 
uh, example over here, or in fact to these, not this one, to these three punctured spheres, um, what you would conclude is that this three punctured sphere is precisely n squared free hypermultiplet. But actually, maybe let me even say um, uh, the. Um, The, the full index, I mean, if it's a free theory, you can just compute the index in one go. Uh, and if I have uh, uh, n uh, uh, free hypers, so I'm sure this is number of free half hypers. So uh, n free uh, uh, hypers. Uh, the contribution to the index is exactly the uh, plethistic exponential of p to the one half over one minus p raised to the two n power. So people know what the plethistic exponential is. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. Let me just tell you what the uh, what the um, uh, Hall Littlewood thing is. Uh, uh, and then I'll tell you. That's equal to the plethistic exponential uh, of tau uh, raised to the 2 nth power, uh, where the plethistic exponential of a formal series ai t to the i is 1 over product i equals 1 to infinity, uh, 1 minus t to the i to the a i -th power. OK, so if you um, compute these expressions for this collection of punctures over here, you re reproduce precisely the index for n squared free hypers. Right, so that thing raised to the 2 n squared power. And for this thing, uh, you uh, recover the fact that the global symmetry is bigger than SUN cross SUN. It's actually SU2N. And you see that there are additional contributions from higher representations of, uh, in, of, uh, of SUN or SLN, I suppose, higher representations of up, uh, that contribute at order tau squared and give you this enhanced global symmetry from SUN squared to SU2N. Uh, the data. Uh, so I have this, um, sorry, I, I should, th these, this was a product over each of the punctures, okay? And what appears here is uh, something that depends on the, cho on the SL2 embedding that um, I used th th that correspond to that nilpotent orbit. Okay, so, the, so all the factors, uh, both in, nu in the numerator, depend on the, on the um, punctures. Okay, uh, and so you give me a collection of punctures. I plug in, plug those into the numerator of that formula. The denominator is essentially always the same, independent of which punctures I'm choosing. Um, and so you could apply that formula to uh, uh, this thing directly, the four punctured sphere. And what you would find is that the index is equal to the product of the index for n squared free hypers and uh, 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 sorry, to 2n squared free hypers and n squared minus 1 free vectors. I didn't write out what the answer is for the free vectors, but I, I, I can do that. Okay? And so um, what that means is there is a limit. Well, no, that's not what it means. It's a consequence of the fact that there's a limit in which it just becomes a free theory consisting of free hypers and free vectors. The index independent of the complex structure of the surface, okay, and so equ is equal to the value you from the free theory. Okay, so uh, I guess 
a, a simple answer uh, 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 to Sergey's uh, previous question was, you know, I, the, the index is not equal to the product of factors coming from free theories. Um, let me see what else I wanted to say about this. Um, and, uh, and moreover, uh, as I said, for n equals 3, this uh, uh, global symmetry, which some of you can't see because I've written it too low, uh, gets further enhanced to E6. And again, you see that from additional contributions uh, 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 to the index over here. Um, Yeah, so let me just write th that statement. So if only lambda equals trivial contributes to order tau squared, then then there are no free hypers. And the global symmetry is just the product of the manifest global symmetries, Fi. Uh, and if, conversely, if uh, some higher lambdas contribute, then we get uh, free hypers if they contribute at order tau and or uh, enhanced global symmetry F. And that's probably a good uh, place to take a break and we'll talk about topic two uh, after the break. Oh, yes, sorry. Uh, 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 Ron uh, uh, generously uh, donated uh, 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 some of his time after the break to, um, what, 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 uh, to uh, a continuation of this lecture where we'll talk about the twisted theories and some of the peculiarities there that I've uh, alluded to several times but haven't actually spelled out. Okay, so let's stop there, have a few questions, have a little tea, and, and um, thank you. How much longer will I take? Uh, 15. Yeah, no, 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 no problem. So maybe we meet, do you want to take questions now? Or I'm happy to take some questions now if there are people have questions about this. Questions? The other part is kind of, uh, this is a good breaking point because the other part is logically independent of what I said here. So any questions about this part of the talk? I had asked yesterday about how do you know what kind of node will emerge when you pull the two spheres apart. I don't know if you have answered that through this, but could you please explain it again? So you, uh, when you take the weak limit, and let's say you kind of completely separate the two spheres, what kind of node emerges? Right, so uh, uh, as I said, if I take, so we studied the different degenerations of, of this four punctured sphere, right? One of them, uh, I had uh, two copies of this thing connected by an SUN gauge theory. Right, so uh, uh, and so th this thing, as I said, was n squared free hypermultiplets or n copies of the fundamental of S U N. So I had n copies of the fundamental on this side, n copies of the fundamental on that side, and an S U N gauge theory connecting them. Right, that was one degeneration of this four punctured sphere. The other degeneration, I had this thing on 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 one side, and then this. Um, uh, uh, irregular thing on the other side, and I said that was an SU2 gauge theory uh, 
with one hypermultiple and the fundamental over here, gauging this superconformal field theory. So the exercise, which uh, because of my pedagogical failings, you can't actually carry out based on what I've told you, but you could if you actually looked up those papers, is compute the index, first of all, for this four punctured sphere, and check that it's what I said it was. Then compute the index for this guy, and see that it's what I said it was. And compute the index for this guy, and see that it uh, uh, is what you expect. Right? You don't know what it is a priori, but you do know that there's a limit where I have three free vectors, namely the SU2 gauge theory, two free hypers, namely these guys, and whatever's left over. Right? Since you know the index and it's independent of the complex structure of the surface, decomposing it into this product of factors uh, should give you the correct answer any which way. Right? And so you should check that the index you compute for this thing times the index for three free vectors times the index for two free hypers agrees with the index computed this way. Always have uh, a single answer to that if we were to just use the index, or could there be more than one uh, representation uh, that would satisfy the same index formula? Now, I'm trying to solve for what kind of uh, flavor symmetry I would have. So, so uh, I mean, uh, I'm a, a lazy man, and so I uh, um, hope to finish my computations in finite. So the index for free theories, you can just write down in closed form. right? The index given by some arbitrary collection of punctures plugging into this formula, you can only crank out order by order in the series expansion, and eventually you get tired. right? So if, if you're asking about uh, uh, whether there are two theories which agree up to order tau squared, or whatever order you want to compute to, um, I can't prove to you that there's nothing like that. I mean, in fact, there, no, there definitely are things like that, because some given conformal field theory has many different realizations in different class S constructions. And so, in fact, we'll see an example uh, after the break of a, of a theory in the twist D4 theory that has some other realization in some other untwisted theory. So the same SCFT will occur multiple times in this sort of tinkertoy catalog. And of course, it will have the same index every time you compute it. Um, I think you're asking a more refined question. If I only compute the index up to some order, can I distinguish two theories which, if I'd been stronger, you know, and computed to higher order, maybe I discover the difference or something. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, depends how strong you are. Um, yeah. More questions? If not, I think we'll have plenty of time to ask Jacques questions over tea. So let's meet at uh, eleven fifteen for the last part of Jacques' talk. Thank you. Want to take this?